Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you the best recording settings for OBS Studio version 29 and above. I'm on version 29.1.2 and you guys really liked my previous video on the best streaming settings. Be sure to check that one out if you haven't already in the description below. And I got a bunch of requests wanting the best recording settings for OBS. So that's what we'll be talking about today, and I'll basically structure this video into three sections. The first section, I'm going to show you the absolute highest quality best settings. If you have the best of the best hardware, these are super unnecessary, but if you want the best, the first section will be for you. Section number two is if you have a slightly lower end PC or an average PC, and you just want a good looking video, and low file space needed, so doesn't take up much storage, and pretty easy on your hardware. And then section three will be my personal settings, what I prefer and why. So stick around to the end because I've got some really great tips here. All right, let's get started. All right, so before we get started with section one of this video, we're just gonna go into OBS and into the settings uh, in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and into the advanced tab. Here we're going to set some settings that are going to remain consistent and the same throughout all the remaining three sections of this video. So process priority, you're going to want to make sure that's as high as possible. Set it to be as high as possible without impacting your game's performance too much or whatever it is you're doing on the computer. Um, so I always have it set to high, but maybe for your uh, PC, if it's a little bit lower end, you could select above normal or normal. Uh, but yeah, the higher, the better. And then the rest of it is all default, aside from some streaming settings, but we're not going over that in this video. So one thing though, one exception for the first section, if you really want the best of the best, you can select 10-bit color instead of 8-bit color, but totally unnecessary. So I just leave it at all default, 8-bit, and that's all good to go. All right, let's get started with section one. All right, so starting off here in OBS Studio for section one, which is going to be the best settings you can possibly have right now. I have an NVIDIA 4090 GPU and an Intel 13900K CPU. So I'm able to demonstrate this. I'm going to assume that if you're still watching this section right now, that you have similar hardware, but if not, you can skip to section two. So we're gonna start out bottom right hand corner, click the settings and then click the video section. Here you're gonna see the base canvas resolution, which is the resolution of your monitor or screen you're recording on, and then the output scaled resolution, which in my case is just going to stay at 4K. My base is 4K and the scaled resolution is 4K because we're doing the best of the best section here. If you have an 8K monitor, by all means go for it. You're definitely going to need a lot of power to try to record something like that. Um, and then we have 60 frames per second. Obviously for a video like this, I could totally get away with 30 frames per second, but I'm assuming that a lot of you might be gamers or whatever, in which case I definitely like to do 60 frames per second for all of the games that I record. Just a much smoother image for more action-y type shots. And then there is no downscaling required in this case. We'll go over downscaling in section number two. So now for the output section, that's what you're gonna head to next and you'll want to make sure that this is on the advanced tab. It will probably be on the simple tab. You'll wanna just hit that little drop down and select advanced. And then we're gonna head over to recording since that's what this video is about. So you'll obviously want to select the path where your recordings will be saved. And then best of the best settings here, again, totally unnecessary. You're going to select the recording format as QuickTime uh, or .mov. And then your video encoder is going to be NVIDIA NVENC H.264 and the audio encoder is going to be 32-bit float. So I'll explain these settings here. The .mov allows for a bit higher quality resolution and a bit better audio than MP4. Now OBS 29 and above also allows you to do fragmented MP4 and fragmented MOV. So previously you had to choose MKV if you actually wanted to kind of save your file in case OBS Studio crashed. So fragmented uh, MOV and MP4 will allow that to happen. In, uh, in the case of OBS Studio crashing, whatever you've recorded up to that point will be saved. But in doing fragmented MOV here, 
we're actually not really able to use 32-bit float audio. It keeps giving us a whole bunch of errors, so maybe OBS will fix that, but you could try fragmented MOV. I've never had OBS crash in the middle of recording, so I've always been totally fine. You can also use H.265 or uh, HEVC as it's called, but again, it just gives us a whole bunch of errors, especially for the 32-bit float audio. The reason 32-bit float audio is so amazing, and if you can select it, is because I could scream into the mic and I could still edit everything after and it would sound fine. It basically is like completely lossless, completely uncompressed audio. So you're going to get the best audio sound if you select this, which is important. And I may go over audio in another video if that's requested. Now scrolling down a bit in the encoder settings, you're going to select CBR for constant bitrate. And if you're filming in 4K at 60 frames per second, you're going to want to select 120,000 kilobits per second. It is a stupidly high number, but the bitrate directly correlates to a higher quality video and a much larger file size, but that's assuming you do not care if you're still watching here in section one. So the general rule of thumb for bitrate and what actually makes sense, you definitely don't want to go over this, is to take your frame rate, and if you're filming in 1080p, you'll take your frame rate and multiply it by a thousand, and that's your bit rate. So if I was filming in 1080p at 60 frames per second, we would do 60,000 kilobits per second. But then the general rule for 4K is to take your frame rate and double it, and then multiply it by a thousand. So we're filming in 60 frames per second, so we're going to double it, which is 120, multiplying by 1,000, so 120,000. This is totally overkill, but it is going to give you the best of the best. Then you're going to select your keyframe interval to 2 seconds, and then the preset, obviously the best quality, why not? Single pass, and then profile is high. Um, these are just, again, best of the best settings. We're not gonna check look ahead. Uh, it sometimes helps with uh, lower end hardware, but I find that it just does not do a difference at all. It just tries to predict kind of uh, like it looks ahead and, and tries to kind of predict the next frames and stuff. It kind of just makes it a little more laggy if you actually have higher end hardware. Psychovisual tuning. This you definitely want to have checked. This is pretty cool. It basically just optimizes the bit rate and increases the perceived visual quality of the video um, by just like kind of looking ahead and, and utilizing your, your GPU a little more to make a better quality image. And then max B frames is set to two, GPU is set to zero. So those are the best of the best settings. And at the end of this video, I will put a little clip of Valheim, which is the game that I record on this channel most side by side using each one of these sections. One from section one here, one from section two, and one from my personal uh, favorite settings in section three, so you all can see the difference. So stick around for that. And now let's move on to section two. All right, so now jumping into section two here for if you have a mid-range to low-end PC and you don't want a super big file size and you want it to be pretty friendly on whatever hardware you have in your computer. And you'll already notice that the video quality here is a little bit less than it was in section one because I'm obviously recording this section on the best settings for lower-end uh, PCs. So going to the settings again and then going to the video, you'll see that I have a output of 1080p. Um, so we're doing the output scaled resolution. If your monitor is only 1080p, which I'm assuming maybe it is if you're watching this section, you will not need any downscaling required. But if your monitor is 4K and you want to downscale to 1080p, which is pretty average for the settings here, um, you'll want to use Lancos uh, scaling for the 36 samples. That's gonna be the best quality one but if your computer can't quite handle that, you can use the 16 samples and it's gonna be pretty good. We're also doing 60 frames per second. 30 frames per second will still work as well, but if you're doing gaming, we're gonna stick with the 60 frames per second. Now going to the output tab and then making sure you're in the advanced mode still, going to recording, and then we're going to select the recording format as fragmented MP4. As I was explaining in, in uh, section one, uh, fragmented mp4 will allow it so that if OBS crashes then uh, everything you've recorded up to that point will still be saved. And then we're going to use the video encoder uh, NVENC H.264 or whatever uh, your graphics card. I have an NVIDIA so it's NVIDIA NVENC H.264. 
and then audio encoder is just the FFmpeg AAC for the audio there. And now moving on to the encoder settings, our rate control is going to be set to CBR for constant bitrate, and then that bitrate is going to be 12,000 kilobits per second, so much less than the 120,000 kilobits per second from section 1. Uh, this is a really good bitrate. You don't need to go over this for 1080p at 60 frames per second, and I'll put up on screen a screenshot of what YouTube recommends for your bitrate and your frame, uh, based on your resolution and frame rate, what you should set the bitrate as. These recommendations are actually really, really good. Uh, I've used them, they work really well, so I'd say for 1080p at 60 frames per second, you could really use anything from about 8,000 to 12,000 kilobits per second. Um, or again, if you're on 1080p at 30 frames per second, you could probably get away with four to 6,000 kilobits per second. So yeah, it's uh, it works really well, looks pretty good. Again, you're seeing it on screen right now, how it looks when I'm just recording my, my screen. You'll see it at the end again when I put all the clips side by side of how each of these settings looks. And then if you can, set your uh, preset to be the slowest quality, or the slowest and best quality. But if you can't, that's another thing that you can also uh, select 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 until you get one that works for you. So that's just kind of trial and error depending on the hardware you have. Setting the keyframe to 2, and then cycle visual tuning as I, as I explained in section 1, make sure that's checked. And then I found personally, uh, before I got my higher end PC and I had a lower end computer for the first half of when I started this channel, I found that look ahead being checked actually helped a little bit. Uh, it just made it slightly better, but with higher end uh, hardware, it just doesn't really do much. And I always leave it unchecked because it just adds to the lag a bit once you have higher end hardware. So you can experiment checking that and leaving it unchecked. But at the very least, make sure that psychovisual tuning is checked, and then GPU is zero, and max B frames is set to two. So these are really good general intermediate settings. And uh, again, you could use fragmented MOV here. You could use the HEVC or H.265. Those are like slightly, you know, if you have a slightly better computer, you can try those. And then again, your bitrate directly correlates to your quality and your file size. So if you want a small file size, be sure to set your bitrate on the low end of the recommendations there. Because the higher your bitrate, the higher quality your video, yes, but the much larger your file will be as well. So for a lot of you asking those questions in my last video, definitely play around with your bitrate if you're not happy with your file size. So now let's move on to my personal favorite settings. And what I think, if you have the hardware for it, is going to be best. It's what I use on this channel, and it's kind of the happy medium of what looks really, really, really amazing for high-end hardware in my case, and utilizing things like AV1 encoding and all of that. So a lot of great tips here about to come, so stick around. So now for my personal favorite settings here for OBS Studio. In the video section, I have my monitor resolution at 4K, I do not go down to 1080p. I even stream at 4K because of something that I'm about to show you here soon. And again, watch my streaming video. You'll learn a lot about the streaming. Um, but yeah, so I don't need any downscaling, no downscaling required, and 60 frames per second. So similar to the first section where I set up the best of the best, I have that the same video settings here. And then for the output tab, this is where I've changed a lot. In the recording section, and again, select advanced mode, I have the recording format set to fragmented mp4, again, so that I don't lose my file if anything happens with OBS being uh, corrupt or crashing or any of that. And then the video encoder, because I have a 4090, and if you have a 4090 or a uh, one of the new Intel graphics cards, you will be able to do AV1 encoding. Now, AV1 encoding is super, super, super amazing for a few reasons that I'm about to tell you here. Um, Reason number one, you can set your bitrate to be 30% lower than you otherwise would have to and maintain a visually lossless video quality from what you otherwise would have set your bitrate at. So for example, if I set my bitrate, if I was using H.264 uh, encoder here and I set my bitrate at just say 100,000 kilobits per second. Now, if I, set, if I used AV1 encoding, and I set my bitrate at only 70,000 kilobits per second, 
my video quality would essentially be the same. I would not notice any downgrade in quality. Now, again, those are ridiculously high numbers, but the other beauty of AV1 encoding is because you can set your bitrate really low and maintain a really high quality image, you can also reduce your file size, which is awesome. So I still, I use this for streaming. And again, check out my streaming video if you wanna know uh, the benefits and why it's so good for streaming with saving upload speed and everything. But I also use it for recording because why not have a smaller file size if I don't have to have something super big? It also edits really fast in DaVinci Resolve, which is the video editor that I use. So now for the audio encoder, I'm still using the FFmpeg AAC. I just don't see the need to go to a 24-bit or 32-bit float audio. Uh, I've never had an issue with it, especially if I have my audio settings set up correctly. And then for the constant bitrate, I have it set to 16,000, which is super, super low considering that I'm doing 4K at 60 frames per second. So, and this is again, recorded in only 16,000 kilobits per second. I've found that it just looks amazing, creates a really small file size. And uh, again, if, if you were, uh, if you're wanting to sacrifice your file size a little bit, I might go up to something closer to like 30,000 or 60,000 uh, kilobits per second, which is still crazy, crazy low. Again, YouTube recommends that you're at least at like 68 or 70,000 um, kilobits per second for 4K at 60. So this is stupidly low, yet really good audio quality and really good video quality in 4K. So that's what I use for recording and streaming is 16,000 seems to be my happy number of what I'm happy with, with the least amount of quality being lost. And then same for all the other settings, keyframe interval is two, slowest and best quality uh, preset, tuning is high quality, single pass, and then psychovisual tuning is checked. So those are my personal favorite settings. And if you have a graphics card that can do AV1 encoding, by all means, absolutely utilize it. It is super amazing. I never thought I'd be using it much, but I'm really, really, really happy with it. And if you can't do AV1 encoding, select H.265 or HEVC. They're both the same exact thing. Um, and yeah, H.265 is basically what came kind of before AV1 was a thing um, in the newer graphics cards, and it is still much better than H.264. So H.265 or HEVC is basically going to still allow you to use a lower bitrate than you otherwise would with H.264. And uh, if you can handle that, which you certainly will be able to handle that, especially even if you can do AV1, um, go ahead and select that if you don't have a graphics card that can handle AV1 encoding, because that will still give you a small file size for a really good looking image. And there definitely is a quality difference between the HEVC and H.264 settings. So if you're using the same bitrate, HEVC will give you a perceived higher quality image. So with that, as promised, here are three clips on screen, each of which is using one of the three settings that I went over in the three sections of this video so that you can see the quality difference and kind of determine maybe which one works for you. Again, I definitely would not recommend best of the best. It's just super unnecessary, but I figured I'd put it in there just so that you all can see it if you uh, if that's the route you want to go. So that's it for the best settings for recording in OBS Studio. I hope you all learned something and enjoyed it. Again, be sure to comment below. I am always happy to answer questions. I try to cover as much as I can think of in these videos, but obviously I miss out on a whole bunch, so share your other uh, thoughts and learning and experiences with recording in the comments as well. And I'm always open to new video suggestions, so if you all would want like an audio video, I've been getting a couple uh, requests for something like that, be sure to comment that below, and without further ado, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.